Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some of the workflow updates to Flotelic. Flotelic is the note-taking app which I'm building, which is designed to help you study, learn, think, write, publish with maximum efficiency and consistency. So let's dive right into it. So here is the app that we have. Uh, so basically the main areas that are different is now that notes can take on uh, note types and workflow states. And the navigation has been updated to reflect this. And I will take you through this. So very simply, like for example, if I'm talking about what is smart notes in the overflow menu here, I can say this is a permanent note. It's a complete idea. And the workflow state in this case is complete. I could have draft ones just so I know which ones I need to fill out and complete. There are lots of different note types now that we can explore. Uh, study notes, idea notes, permanent notes, reference notes, index notes, projects, project notes, books, and person. And I'll explain what those mean. So I'm following the Zettelkasten workflow with this. We have a slip box and your permanent notes get stored in there, fleeting notes, which are your ideas that you just want to capture, and uh, your literature notes, which I call study notes. Uh, I have a video on that on the channel, uh, which is a deep dive into the Zettelkasten method, and we're using Obsidian for that, uh, just to run through an example. So um, I've made some adaptations. Now, the important thing to note here is that this navigation here is a particular style of workflow. For the moment, this is the only one that you'll have access to in the application, but in the future, I will be doing it so that you can change the workflow that you want your collection of notes to go in. So whether you're following the Zettelkasten method, then you can have that workflow, or you want to use a different methodology or a different way of tagging and pushing state through, you can do that. It, it creates the opportunity for some interesting use cases that the app could really lend itself towards, uh, particularly when we get into the, fl uh, the flow management of things, which is uh, the next sort of upcoming parts of the application. And uh, the goal here is that you can actually create your own workflows. So what works for you, you can define that. So you can basically customize whatever goes in this list here, the different types of notes, whatever goes in here, which workflow those notes take on, and the navigation up here. So you can kind of organize your space in there. That. That's for the future. But right now, I'm going to explain what's, what these mean. So the whole premise is that your, your note-taking journey follows the pattern of you have ideas, you have an input, an inbox of content, whether it's ideas, literature notes, you're watching a YouTube video, reading blog posts. So they are your capture. You're capturing things that you bring into your, into your system. And in this case, you can capture ideas or study notes. Uh, this will may include more types of uh, ways of capturing in the future. So let's say I want to create an idea. I could just put one in here and say, uh, let's say um, I've got an idea, uh, different types of note taking systems. Um, so you've got the Zettelkasten, the para method and others. So I could mark this as an idea. Now, the, the concept of the Zettelkasten, in essence, is that you want to boil this, you want to take these ideas, you want to take your study notes, and you want to bring them into your slip box. So there'll be a workflow to say, this is a draft note, I've just captured it. Uh, but if I'm actually ready to process this note, I can mark it as ready to process. And that updates in here. And eventually, once I've taken those ideas and moved them into my my archive, my, my slip box, my permanent storage, then I could mark that as complete. So you can see we have these workflow states and where Flotelic is gonna help you uh, moving forward is to help ensure that you, you do a little every day to move your notes through that workflow. And that's, that's where Flotelic is a differentiator to other note-taking apps, which you may be familiar with. So capture idea notes, study notes, if you've watched the previous videos and study notes we've covered, um, it's now, rather than a radio button, it's now a note type. And again, you could say uh, study note, and then you could put a web link in. It's my blog here. And you could say open a preview of that. That will go and do a web render. 
take the readability mode and place it in here. So this is the readability mode. And I can then study this. So I would say this is ready to study. And once I've made my notes, I could then say it's ready to process. So making your notes on things you've read is one thing, but actually taking that knowledge and slotting it into your archive is the, the goal of that. So we're just tracking those workflow states there. Okay, the archive. So what's this about? The archive has index notes. So this is like a map of content, MOCs, if you're familiar with the Zettelkast and way of doing things. Um, and it's basically a top level organization thing. So these are alphabetically sorted because it's an index. So you want to be able to find things. You can, of course, search your index notes and it allows you to formulate your top level thinking. So I've got an index note of just ideas uh, that I want to kind of research and put content around. Um, and then these can then link off to the various various uh, pieces of content that I want to capture there. So that's what an index note is. So if I, in my second brain, for example, in my index notes, I have top level categories like coaching, cellular biology, uh, content publishing. So you can see how that's a nice sort of index basically of my content. So if it's not index notes, then you've got your permanent notes. And this is your second brain. This is the vastness of what you're going to be capturing in a, say, Zettelkasten method. And a uh, permanent note is something that is your final thought, your final idea sort of captured on the card, on the note, that you want to start linking to other, other things. And the idea here is that you can create, if you've got a question to ask in from your knowledge system, then you're bringing together your permanent notes. So the things that you've you've studied, you've captured, you've brought in, and you've sort of finalized it in its kind of evergreen permanent note state. So that's what they are. And then I've added references as well. So uh, while I'm not using any at the moment, uh, this is if I've just got a reference to say another blog post and I want to reuse that reference or to a book or a page in a book or something like that, I can just sort of sift those as reference notes. They don't have any workflow around them. They are basically just a reference. Okay, so this is the concept. You've got your capturing of ideas and you've got your archiving of ideas and this builds up your second brain, your knowledge system. But you have to ask yourself the question, like, well, what are you doing it for? For me, I want to write better. I want to publish better. I want to produce better YouTube content, blog post content. Um, I want to take my knowledge and understanding and learn through what I publish. So that's the feedback loop. The Zettelkasten method is very much, you learn through writing is the, is the concept there. And uh, that's where projects come in. So this is, with I'm going to see where this goes with the app and I'm going to expand on it, but very much projects are really important in terms of being able to take things that aren't quite uh, evergreen content, but they're a snapshot of that idea that you want to produce into a piece of work, like a blog post, for example. So now you can take a piece of, piece of work and mark it as a project. This one is on the backlog because it's something I want to fill out. So this is uh, after a discussion with a fellow entrepreneur um, who wants to get on the building in public journey, we started capturing some ideas straight into Flowtelic about, okay, if you are thinking of doing a building in public, like what do you need to know? I, I can now go and do some studying on this. So if I find any articles of what other people are talking about this subject, I bring it in here. I could just link my study notes straight into the project. That's not a problem. And eventually then I will kind of flesh it out. Uh, the whole, again, the Zettelkasten way of doing things is I can have multiple projects and I can just say, okay, let's just quickly write this card in a five minute session. And then tomorrow I could do the next card and these projects sort of start percolating and then kind of become ready in their own time. And as projects get more complete, you'll put more effort on those just to get them over the line basically. So the idea here is that you have projects. These are like index cards for your, for your work. They have a workflow as well. So I have things, just projects I know I want to do. I stick them on the backlog. Ones that I'm actively wanting to work on so I can go in progress and I can, I can quickly access those in the navigation. So what am I working on right now? What's on my backlog? 
and just access to all my project notes. So uh, if you create a note off a project, that becomes a project note card. So that means you're not putting stuff in your archive. They're, they're sort of tied in context to what it is. You could reuse those note cards in different projects just by linking them in with the double square brackets. And yeah, you take it through the workflow, go from backlog in progress all the way through to completion. And individual note cards. So uh, I need to tag these up correctly um, since I've released this. So this is a project note. Um, I've basically said they don't have any any workflow at this stage because uh, the project is the workflow. I just want to start going through. I may change that uh, as I get a feel for how this works in my own projects and sort of adapt the workflow. Um, uh, the important thing is that what's released here is a is a a thing to now test to go through those workflows and iron out any kind of things that don't make any sense, get some feedback and improve on it. And as I say, one workflow is not the end goal here. Having a system where you can create different types of workflows depending on how you want to work is the end goal. So yeah, this is what projects are. So we capture ideas, we record them in our main store of knowledge, and then we start creating works out of that writing and publishing. And then just finally, we have artifacts. I've brought this in because there are some things that have a categorization, such as books I'm reading, people who I know. And I thought, Actually, it'd be kind of nice to be able to just organize those separately. So if I if I look at a book, uh, I don't have any in here because um, I haven't tagged them up yet. Uh, in my second brain, I do have books. I, um, so what I would do is say, if I'm talking about the low content publishing, I will mark that as a book. And then when I look at my books, so that means I can look at a book and I can see what works I've created out of that, what study notes I'm working on out of that. There'll be more to expand on this. And again, people would be things like authors. So uh, one of my favorite uh, authors and public speakers is Simon Sinek. Um, I can sort of link articles, TED Talks, and his books all together to his work and start kind of finding the ideas that I formed from his work and, um, and use it as another point of reference to introduce my content. So, and then finally, uh, there's the everything tab, which basically shows you everything. Um, and then you can search that. So if you, there's, you know there's something you want to find, uh, you can do that in the everything. So pretty much this is, uh, this concludes the update to Flirtelic at this moment in time. Uh, this will be expanded on. Uh, it's going to go through some more rigorous testing now to see what, whether this workflow makes sense, if it works. Um, but it's a great step forward at bring, bringing something that's more fully formed out of the app uh, to help you in your kind of workflow journey. Um, and yeah, the next uh, set of features that are in plan are the tooling around the workflow now to help you a visualize where you are in your progress, but also encourage you to spend a bit of time, you know, spend those five minutes, study this one article. So you generate those study notes and then spend a bit of time organizing that into your permanent store. So you, so you're actually going through, this is, you know, the tagline for the product, as I said earlier, is to, um, uh, to study, learn, think, write, and publish with maximum efficiency, but also consistency. The consistency part is where the tool helps you through that workflow rather than leaving you going months, forgetting that you were supposed to be doing this thing. It should be keeping you on top of uh, those small incremental pieces of, of activity that compound over time. And that's really the main goal of this. So uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you enjoy the update. If you want to get access to the update, uh, the link is in the description. Uh, it's join.flotelic.com. That's the wait list. Uh, but once you fill that in, uh, you get a link directly to the, uh, the prototype app that you can play with and uh, start building up your, your collection. And everything's local storage, so there's no server-side syncing or anything like that, no, no registration uh, once you get access to the app. And if you do want to take your notes offline, you can right-click, export them to Markdown. That will take them out. If you want to bring them back in, just drag them into a collection window here. And the cool thing is it even exports the workflow states uh, you'll see that in the markdown files. So if you spend a lot of time organizing your, your work, 
if you do bring it out into the markdown and want to bring it back in, you don't lose that state. It keeps that inconsistent uh, consistent to where it was previously. So yeah, thank you very much and catch you in the next video.